Today we're going to talk about rhythm and I'd like to show you something that I kind of taught myself when I was young simply because it was all I had. I had to figure it out myself. <laughs> so I kind of morphed into my own little style I guess and that's one of them that I learned that I taught myself. Um, I didn't learn it on a computer. I didn't learn it watching TV even though we had one. I didn't learn it listening to the radio, although I heard the beat and I was trying to bring it back to the guitar. Um, but it's just something I found I could do. I could follow a beat by using it, okay? And, um, and from listening to music on the radio and listening to the beat, um, I could, you know, tap it out. and then recreate it with different styles that I taught myself. One, that one, and this one. There's all kinds of things you can do with, with, with just those two methods alone. So um, I'm gonna show you one of them today and I hope that it's something that I can explain clearly because it's something you got to get in your heart. You really do. How do you do that? I say listen to music. Listen to it and try to recreate it. Uh, find ways. Uh, go get yourself a box and beat on it if you have to. <laughs> you can take the face of your guitar and listen to something. Beat it out. Just listen. Let it become part of your heart. When uh, when I'm learning something, I'll sit there and just listen to it. And you'll see me, and I'll be beating on the guitar just on the side, trying to get whatever that rhythm is down. And uh, and so that's how I do it. I mean, somebody asked me to use a metronome. I've practiced with them before, and I like it because. I didn't have that when I was young, but I found now that I'm older and I try it out, I'm shocked at how easy I can get off sometimes. <laughs> and so you, it, it's, it tells you, they'll let you know right away if you're not, if you're not in sync with it. So I think it's a good tool. It's a good way to train your ear um, and uh, to stay on beat because you might start out with four, four time. And when you come around and you get to that, to that end, of what you're doing where it's, there's closure, you realize that you've, you're off. You'll hear it in a metronome. And so it's, it's um, it, I think it's a great tool. It's a good way to train your ear. But when I was young, I was brought up in the country, Palatine Bridge, New York. That's where the sign came from. And uh, that little town was right outside Canada Harry, is where they made beech nut baby food there. That was the industry. Beech nut baby food and beech nut gum. I don't know if they made the gum there or they just wrapped it there, but nevertheless, um, they definitely put out gum from those factories, the beech nut gum. And so um, I lived in the, just across the bridge from Canada Harry in this small town called Palatine Bridge. And I went to school in a, it was like a one room stone uh, school. It had a big old bell on top. And uh, yeah, it was uh, quite an experience. I didn't realize as a child how fortunate I was to experience uh, such a life because we could go out into the fields behind our house and walk for miles amongst the farmer's corn, and throw <laughs> apples at each other. My brother threw one at a bull one time and it came after us. And fortunately we got over the fence fast enough. That was the stupidest move he ever made. <laughs> Anyways, so I was brought up around that. And when I w went to school with a violin. We had to learn some kind of an instrument. 
and we couldn't afford, you know, what I really wanted to learn was the flute, but I had my grandfather's violin, so I started with that. And then about 13, I was given a guitar. And from then on, I never turned back. The violin went up in the closet. You couldn't march in the band with it. Uh, it wasn't really a cool instrument, you know, pulling out your violin. Um, I think it is now, but it wasn't then. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so so that is a young girl. It wasn't really my first choice. But when I got the guitar, oh my goodness, I just fell in love with it. Well, the problem was we didn't have internet. We had television and radio, that was it. And um, uh, I I guess about a year into it, I my parents did pay for a few lessons that I had, which were very helpful because that's where I learned actually to read, at least in the first position, the scale, and uh, to play the method where your thumb is uh, responsible for strings six, five, and four. And, your fingers are responsible for strings one, two, and three. So that was taught through lessons. Um, and uh, I, I didn't go very long. But, you know, anything else, I really was on my own. And uh, I can remember listening to the radio at, so at songs. Uh, that was Beatles, you know, when Beatles were very, very popular. I liked the monkeys, Hey, Hey with the Monkeys. Uh, I'm a believer. <laughs> Do you remember those songs? Anyways, that, but I'd listen to them and um, I didn't know what the chords were. Um, I had to figure it out and I would listen to the beat and I can remember just trying to get the beat down and I'd listen, I'd start beating on something. And what a very good place to beat on was the top of your guitar. And so I found out that, you know, as I'd listen, I could I could easily keep up with the beat just with my fingers. A lot better than, I mean, I could do it with, we didn't have picks, but my matchbook covers, I could do it with that. But I found it was a lot easier to do things like that with my fingers. And I could actually keep up with the beats. Okay, so this is the this is the actual beat that I wanted to show you, or rhythm style, and it goes something like this. Let's see if I can do it now. pick up speed on it. Here's how you do it, okay? Now look at your, your hands and think of, of your fingers having um, actually three instruments just wrapped up into this one hand, okay? You're going to have your bass, it's going to be your thumb. And you're going to have your pointer finger is going to have its own job too. And it's going to be responsible for doing the upstroke. Okay, so the thumb is the bass, and this finger is always doing the upstroke. And then these two fingers right here, they're the downstroke. And the pinky, it doesn't have a job. It's too young. <laughs> It just goes for the ride, okay? Thumb down, first finger up. These two fingers down, first finger up, thumb. That's how it's being done. So let's slow it down, okay? So remember, this two fingers have one job. They're gonna do the downstroke. Pointer finger, upstroke, thumb, the bass. And you can alternate, you know. 
to different strings for strings four, five, and six, okay? Depending on how you hear the music and what you, what you want to bring out. Okay, so let's start with an A minor. Okay. Thumb up, down, up. With one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. I've slowed it way down and it looks a little sloppy, but it's the best way I can show you. It's thumb, then the finger is up, two fingers are down, finger up. It's going to sound like this. Let me bring it up. Bring the drawback to using your fingers. There's quite a bit of wear on your fingernails. And so I find that my uh, ring finger, for some reason, that nail wears out right here on the edge. It doesn't break. My nails don't break. They just fi it files them down. So I end up with a little point over here and I have to readjust it. But um, for the most part, I've been fortunate because my nails are strong enough to handle it. But uh, and sometimes I'll just take fingernail polish and, 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 and put that on there. Not very often, but sometimes I've taken a clear coat, stuck it on there, and, and that helps sometimes too. So anyway, so that's where we're at. So give me some feedback on that. See if you can, fi did you figure it out? Um, did it, is it helpful? Um, I know it's probably easier if you're sitting down with someone and they're showing it to you and then you're giving them feedback back and forth by doing this style. And um, it, it, it's a lot easier, I think. All right, so play around with that. Then turn on your radio or your computer um, or your MP3 player, listen to some music and see if you can beat it out. see what you come up with. All right. Well, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And um, I think that's it. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are in this world. Mm -hmm.